Praise the Lord. So bring out your Bible. Make we study. Amen. After all, we are commanded to say, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A time message in bread assembly would they read Bible? Would they study? Amen. So carry your Bible, study very well. Praise the Lord. So we'll go to Revelation chapter 1. Today we'll try as much as possible as if we can go to chapter verse 8. We're going to take it verse by verse. And the reason for this study is because many of us have been here for some time. Many are joining us every day. Praise the Lord. And we don't believe that you just come to join church. Because if God does not bring you to bride assembly, you will not come. You do hear me? If God does not influence you or direct your foot to this ministry, you will not come. If you come on your own, after one or two weeks, you will go back to where you are coming from. It is God he said that brought you that can keep you here, whether you like it or not, because there is something God wants to do with your life. Therefore, each one of you that God open your eyes or order your footstep to this ministry, one thing we believe convincing is that God has brought you here in order to line you up and prepare you for home going. Amen. God has brought you here to line you up and prepare you for home going. Because every true elect seed, wherever they are, at this hour and time, God will fish them out. So when you come here and we talk about Bible, forget about that we are talking jokingly. We want to talk about Bible. Open your ear, open your heart, and listen. Amen? Sometimes it is not that prophetic discernment that God brought you here for. It is not that miraculous healing that God brought you here for. It is not that supernatural thing that happened to you that God brought you here for. All those one is an attachment to keep you here for you to listen for the unveiling of the word. I may Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. So because many people are joining us every day, we think it necessary to go back to this world and begin to extract them again to give them opportunity to hear and learn. Amen. So that not that one of these days, maybe you find yourself among message believers. Amen. Because they are all over Lagos. You may meet, come among these message believers, and they will ask you which church, where are you worshiping? And then you tell them bride assembly. And they begin to speak the bride language to you. And you are so ignoramus. And they will blame us. Think we are not teaching you anything. Amen. So for listening and listen very well. Book of Revelation chapter 1. Are we there? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Father, bless the reading of your word tonight in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Eternal God, we know that this particular book is too deep. We classify it, Papa, as a 
confidential letter you wrote to your bride. Daddy, open our eyes now to God to the little that we are going to study in the name of Jesus Christ. May he benefit us, O oh God, and add a plus to our pre Christian experience and knowledge in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Praise the Lord. Okay. First of all, if you can we read the book of First Peter chapter 1. Sorry, Second Peter chapter 1. When we look at the book of Revelation, because so many people are here from their denominational background. Let's look at Second Peter chapter 1. Read it from verse 19 and 21. He said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy where unto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in darkness in that place until the day down and the day star arise in your in your knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private word interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God took as they were moved by the Holy Ghost Amen and to all that have been privileged to have this knowledge unveiled to us in our days and hour look at what the Lord said in the book of Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10, verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and the earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so is seemed good in thy sight. Amen. That scripture becomes necessary because some of the things we are going to learn and understand here, brethren, there are doctors of divinity that don't know it. There are people that have doctorate degrees in theology. They don't know it. There are people that have, that have gone to university to study theology and have master degree in theology. They don't know it. Amen? Why? It is not given to them to know them. But Human being had loaded their brain and their mind with knowledge that come from human wisdom. Amen. And that is why their revelation and that one that you have, they are two parallel lines. They can never meet at any point. That is why we are privileged, brethren. We are very, very privileged. In fact, we are highly honored that God opened a chapter in this last time and carry us along. Amen? That we are not ignorant of what God is doing, but part of what God is doing. It is a great thing of joy to us. Amen? If you further again to verse 23 or the same chapter of Luke, you have another comment that Christ made here. You see, and he turned verse 23 of Luke chapter 10 and he turned him unto his disciple and said privately, blessed are the eyes we see the thing that ye see for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them 
and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, this book of Revelation, hallelujah, they were written in AD 96. Amen. By Apostle Paul, hallelujah, those that enjoy the full benefit of this particular book is the end time bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is the end time bride of Jesus Christ that enjoy the full benefit of the book of Revelation. Because the healed bride of Ephesian church age, they didn't need it. Because in their day, the light was seen with them. Amen. Smyrna church, they didn't need it. Hallelujah. Pagamos, Tytira, praise the Lord. Sardis and Philadelphia. Philadelphia have a little bit, a little small. But the full and final unveiling of that word is in our days under the voice of seven angel ministry. So, brethren, we are privileged. We are what? Privileged. That is why if you are new among us, we may say certain things and they may sound strange in your ears. And when such a thing happens, brother, sister, don't run away and draw a conclusion. Ah, why church I went to in the Jesha? Hey, they say what about this in the name of Jesus, instead of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, wow, they say four prophets will come. I don't jam one. Hey, they say God is not three persons in one. Now, only one God. I don't hear that for the first time. Now, wow. Don't run away. Because if you do that, you may place yourself in the position of Pancho's pilot. Pancho pilot stand before truth and were asking truth, what is truth? Amen? Pilo pilot stand before truth and were asking truth, what is truth? The young rich ruler was busy scattering everywhere looking for eternal life he went to Sadducee, went to Pharisee, went to Zealot, went to Sanhedrin, looking for eternal life and here was him, tied him before eternal life and suddenly turned away from eternal life Amen he started eternal life and went to Sadducee church you couldn't find it there he went to Pharisee church, you couldn't find it there he went to Zealot. He couldn't find it there. He went to St. Hedren. He couldn't find it there. He went to meet a Horedian. He couldn't find it there. And one day, he met a man called Jesus. The son of God. For the eternal life is in the son. And say, what can I do to have eternal life? Tell before eternal life. And the condition for receiving eternal life was given to him. And he turned away from eternal life. And went home very sorrowful. May that not be your portion as we are come to bride assembly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 1. Amen. I'll be asking question. I'll be asking the old Methuselah's question. So prepare. Amen. By talking of the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him, is a revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave to Jesus to give to John his servant to bring them to the church. Amen. And John received these things in symbol, prophetic picture, and object. Praise the Lord. What he received, he said he didn't understand it. So he just penciled down what he saw. Amen. And the Bible says, Who by record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw. Praise the Lord. And history declared unto all so of you that have had us here before. History declared that Apostle John, he was the last of the apostles of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Amen. Is that true? If it's true, say amen. amen. He was the last and the oldest. The one that lived longer. Amen. He was a type of the end time bride. He had the longevity of life. Within which period, he was able to live long, to cultivate what's of righteousness, and come to know the husband very, very well on one-to-one -one basis. Amen? He was beloved. The Bible has recorded that he was always the one that you to lean on the breast of Jesus Christ. Is that true? Praise the Lord. So he was a type of the end time bride. Praise the Lord. Amen? He was, the Bible said, uh, sorry, uh, Christian tradition said that Apostle John was arrested in Ephesus where he pastored. Amen? He was arrested there by the Roman authorities. Praise God. After they beat him very, very well, beat him very well, and then a history recorded tradition said that he was put inside a hot oil. They decided to make him stew. They stew him. Put him inside a hot oil and boil him for hours. After they boil him for hours, he refused to die. They said, this man must be a witch. Amen? So they decided to do what? To send him into an island, Patmos Island, where they believe that Dangerous animals and snake now will destroy him there. See, so you don't want to die inside a hot oil. Let animal go and kill him inside the bush. Amen. He went there. It was under that condition that Christ met him and gave him the revelation that we are reading today. Hallelujah. Some people call him John the Revelator. He's not the Revelator. Amen. It's God that gave him a message to give to the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the word of the prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Amen. Amen. Those who are blessed Amen. Are those that hear and keep it? Praise the Lord. Those that will bless, as I were talking this night, those that will be blessed will be those that will hear and keep it. He that will hear and do it. Because if you hear and you don't do, it will, you will not be blessed and it will not profit you anything. Amen. He like the book of Romans chapter 8. He said, There is therefore no more what? Condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. That is where Pentecost are you to stop when they read it. Am I lying? If you have been there, talk through. When they quote Romans chapter 8, they will read, There is therefore now. No more condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Is that all? Is that all? You see? But Pentecost, they will stop at that. But they, to completely say, there is therefore no more condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Which means, if you are in Christ Jesus, and walk after the flesh, there is condemnation. Is that true? Is that true? There is condemnation. Not just to be in Christ, but to be in Christ and walk in the spirit. But if you are there and walk in the flesh, you will be condemned. Because he that sow into the flesh shall sow into corruption. Praise the Lord. So, those that will be blessed, that hear the word of prophecy are those that will hear it and they will keep it. Amen. I may Lord grant the power to keep it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Verse 4. Verse 4. Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. Amen. He said, John to the seven churches. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and be from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We may have to spend some time here. Amen. To the seven churches we shall get there. We shall go to this city later one by one. But meanwhile, these seven churches, hallelujah, they were in Asia Minor, located in various cities in those days, in Asia Minor, Southern Turkey, today. Amen? The first church there was what? What was the first church that was in that place? Ephesus, second church, Smyrna, the third church, the third church, Pegamot, the fourth one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one, the seventh one, those seven churches, they were in Asia Minor, and they were the church in Ephesus, a city known as Ephesus. The other one was in the city known as Smyrna. The other one was in the city known as Pagamos. The other one was in the city known as Thyatira. And the other one was in the city known as Sardis. And the other church was in the city known as Philadelphia. And the last church was in the city known as Laodicea. They were all a city. They were present in Asia Minor in those days. They were there. Amen. Now, if you notice, those Gentile churches, they were not the only churches at that time. They were churches in Philippi. They were church in Corinth. They were church in Colossians. Amen. But Apostle John were no act to write a letter to the church in Colossians, in Philippi, in Corinth. But God selected these seven churches. The one in Ephesus, the one in Smyrna, city of Smyrna, city of Pagamos, city of Tytira, city of Sardis, city of Philadelphia, and the city of Laodicea. They were particularly picked by God. Amen. Because those seven churches, so written later to, they were a representation of the unfolding seven church period of the Gentile church dispensation. Ask me a question. Are you listening to me? Those seven churches. Jesus write letter to them to give to them. Those letters given to them as at that time. Now William Abraham said that the reason why Christ picked those seven churches of all the churches that were in various cities as at that time. It was because in those seven churches there was a spirit, a characteristic in those churches that will be what will affect the ages they represent. At the church age unfold. Do you understand me? If you don't understand, say, I don't understand. I will repeat. Do you understand me? Sister, do you understand me? Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. If you don't understand, raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Now, we wrote in the Bible there, the Bible says, in the Revelation chapter 4, we read now. The Bible said that John were asked to write a greeting, salutation to seven churches. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now the revelation were being given to John by God in the island of Patmos. 
He says, send greeting to the church in Egyptia. The church in Maitu. The church in Ajegule. The church in Apapa. The church in Orile. The church in Igomo. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I am saying, I say, even though he choose to send salutation to the particular churches, there were churches in Lagos Island. There were churches in Munchi. There were churches in Agon. But he didn't send salutation to those ones. He sent to the one at Ijesha. At Orile. Why? He said, the church in Orile, the church in Maitu, they were a church that what Christ saw inside that church is to be something that we manifest in the period of time known as ages of churches. Do you understand me now? Because when God came to the Gentile to get a bride for himself, praise the Lord, when the gospel of grace came to the Gentile, it was not going to remain for the Gentile for the whole, forever and ever. There was a time because God is a God of time. Amen? God work with time. Do you know that? God work with time because we are creatures of time. Because we, human beings here, we are animals of time. So God also work with time. That was why when the people went to Egypt, they didn't stay there forever. He prophesied, he said, prophesying in the book of Genesis chapter 50, he said, they will remain there for 400 years. Amen? And when that 400 was about to fulfill, God sent Moses to go there and bring them out. Praise the Lord. So also, when the gospel of grace came to the Gentile, it was not to remain for here forever. There was a period of time that God was going to allow the gospel to stay with us in the Gentile world. How many years that it was involved? 2,000 years. How many years? 2,000 years. How many years? How many years? How many years was the gospel to remain with the Gentile? How many years? 2,000 years. Somebody say, can you show me in the Bible? Ask that one because if you go and tell somebody outside, they say, ah, the gospel was supposed to stay with the Gentile people for 2,000 years. They will say, show me in the Bible. Amen? We have a key on that period in Hosea 6.3. Amen? You want to read it? Okay, open it. Hosea. Go to Hosea quickly. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation topic, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Topic, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hosea 6. Six, look at verse 2. Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. Can somebody read it for us? Can somebody that has seen it read it for us please? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. It says, after two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now this prophecy is a key. If I may read it from verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. This is talking to the Jew. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. Amen. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his side. Meaning that Israel who rejected Christ and because they rejected Christ, God put them away. Are you following me, sisters? When they rejected Jesus Christ, the Messiah, God put them aside and turned to the Gentiles. 
Amen. Now this prophecy was saying that God had tear us away. He has smitten us away. But after two days, he will return to us and revive us. Now, that two days, a Bible says in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. Amen. It said, A day before God is how many years? A day before God is how many years? That in that two days is how many years? So that is the key. Mark it in your Bible. Mark it in your Bible. So they really they ask you, say, show me the Bible. You can open Isaiah 6 2 and show them that after two days he will return to the Jew. So the gospel were to remain with us here yeah, for two thousand years. After two thousand years, it will return back to the Jewish people who rejected them that that time their eye would after God have filled with the Gentiles, he will now go and open their eyes and they will not recognize the Messiah that they rejected before. If you understand, say amen. amen. Any question? <laughs> Good. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that is the key. Now, listen, listen, pay attention. <laughs> so that 2,000 years, pay attention. So you understand where we have the church ages. Amen. These 2,000 years was again divided into seven. Are you hearing me? The 2000 time period was divided into seven church ages. God divided them into seven. Amen? That we are known as seven church ages. The first age is Ephesus. The age of Ephesus. Second age is the age of Smyrna. The third age is the age of Pagamos. The fifth, the fourth age is the age of Tytira. The fifth age is the age of Sardis. The sixth age is the age of Philadelphia. And the seventh one, the last, is the age of Laodicea. Any question? We shall break it down. I am still talking on the salutation. Because the salutation was to salute those seven churches. And I told you, these seven churches, when we talk of ages, hallelujah, when we talk of ages, for example, pay attention, for example, in the exposition of the seven church ages, written by Preach and written by William Marion Abraham, the first church age of Ephesus, that age, what we call age, it lasted for 170 years. The first age known as Ephesus, a fisher church age. It lasted for how many years? 170 years. So, but there was a, an age that lasts up to 1,000 years. That was the age of Titira. Amen? The period of the time that known in the history as the dark ages. When church was under the dark ages. Amen. Amen. When we, when we get to that point, we will see the period when one age started and when it ended. Another age started. Another age started and ended. Another age started. And you will see their messengers as we progress. Praise the Lord. But for now, I am giving you a background to know that the letter, the greeting was sent to these seven churches. Amen? Praise the Lord. I hope you are following me. If you are following me, say amen. Oh, thank you. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. Amen. And who is this person? Who is this person? The very person that which is and which was and which is to come. Praise the Lord. 
it cannot be any other person but the person of the almighty god the one that had no beginning or had no ending the elohim the self-existing one that was in the beginning before the beginning began amen that come out from eternity into time and he will come out of time into eternity amen Praise the Lord. And if further, he said again, P from him that was and was to come. And from what again? And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Praise the Lord. Seven spirits. Hallelujah. We had the spirit of God. You had the spirit of God. Amen. We had of the spirit of God now. Ah, what do you look me now? We are heard of the spirit of God. Now we are talking of the seven spirit of God. Is God seven in number? Amen. God is not seven in number. He cannot say seven, 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 seven eighty. You can't say seven eighty. So all the trinitarian, I don't know how we are going to tap in this one. Amen. You can't say trinity here or trinity here or sevenity. Amen? Praise the Lord. Because the greeting comes from the seven spirits. Hallelujah. That is before the throne of God. Hallelujah. And if God is not sevenity, it is not trinity, it is not trinity, but it is only one God as we believe, that reveal himself in three redemptive office of Son, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I repeat. Sister, in this church, we don't believe in Trinity because God is not three persons in one. You know what you believe before? Can I see your hand? Raise your hand. Oh, sister, God bless you. Raise your hand, where, sister? Any other person, you are sitting down in this church and you are still believing in the Trinity, Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity that they taught you in your church. When you are sitting down, we don't believe it because they are nothing like that in the Bible. was handwriting on the wall, it was a sign. Once you are saved, forever you are saved. Everything we receive from God is by faith. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Matter. Doesn't matter. Fruit of delusion. They told you it doesn't matter. It matters. There is yet another day that is his mercy is still available trials of the Christian. Christians face trials. The God of this world cannot be our God because we are in this world but not of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Among brothers and God. Are you here? You are believing in three persons in one God. Amen. You are seeing seven spirit of God. Seven spirit of God. Now, what are you going to call it? Because you already believe there are three persons in one God, Trinity. So this one will be sevenity now. Amen. So if you are from your where you come from, from your denomination, perhaps from deeper life, four square. Choosing Anglican synagogue redeem winners Catholic Rema Bible Church Mountain of Prayer, Mountain of Fire, and you are there, and they you are taught and they knock into your head soundly 
that God in three persons is in one. And you are sitting down here in private assembly believing that you are in the wrong place. We are Bible believing church. We are product of restoration message. God is not three persons in one. God is a spirit. It is not a person. A person is a person. You can know his complexion. You can know his height. You can know his uh, stature. Whether he's thin or fat. That's a person. Amen? But God is a spirit. According to the book of John chapter 4 verse 24. God is a spirit. It is God himself that chooses the form to manifest himself. Depending why he manifested himself. Amen? Depending on what God wants to manifest himself for, he that would make him to know what he would manifest himself. When he manifest himself to Moses at the back of Arabian desert, he appeared in the fire. Because he wanted to catch Moses' attention. It was something miraculous. And when Moses see that fire, he walked closer to see what happened, and God spoke from the fire. Amen? And when he came, he called people out of Egypt. They were worshipping all manner of God in Egypt. God of Yam. God of Nile. God of fertility. God of wine. God of women. God of young men in Egypt. So when God called them out, he told Moses to tell them, Behold, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 verse 4, Hear you, hear ye, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. You should not worship any other God beside Him. Don't make any molded image in likeness of animal or any heavenly bodies. Amen. Because I am not like that. Praise the Lord. Therefore, now when Moses gave that instruction. There was need for this God to come out and introduce himself to his people. Yes. Hallelujah. Because they had the God of our Father. God of our Father. God of our Father. Who is he? So there was need. God knew there was agitation in their heart. He had to come to do what? To introduce himself to them on Mount Sinai. Now I must tell them, sanctify yourself three days. Let no person come near his wife. For the Lord will come to introduce himself to you people tomorrow. Amen. And God say, tell them, make sure nobody come close to the mountain at all. Keep them very far. Because the holiness of God, no human being can stand it. Amen. The Bible says when God came there to manifest, the Bible says there was thick darkness. There were thundering. There were lightning. There were voice of trumpet. There were sound. Moses said, until I hear it, I shake and quake. Until the people that say, hear the voice, they say, Moses, you go and hear him come and speak to us because we cannot stand this type of God. Amen. He is awesome. He is awesome. The Elohim, we call him the great eternal spirit. Is the great eternal spirit. He is so big, he occupies the whole earth. He is also so small, he can enter the womb of a woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, where you are, we don't believe in Trinity. God is a spirit. He revealed himself in the three redemptive office of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He has a name that he chose for the redemption of man. The name Jesus. And that name is his father's name. He gave it to his son. He is the only first begotten. Amen. And I say so many of you here. 
You born your first son, you call him Junior. Why are you calling him indirectly? If your name is Thomas and your first son is Junior, what are you calling him indirectly? Thomas Junior. Praise the Lord. Amen. I say also among the Abreba and Ohafia, Sister Juliet. One half year. Among Abreba and Ohafia people, if you ask among them, you will hear Imo, Imo. Carlo, Carlo. It is because the father is Carlo. He didn't want to call him Junior. He just called him son. Carlo. So the boy will be answering Carlo, Carlo. Amen. Kanayo, oh Kanayo. Praise the Lord. Imo, Imo. The father is Imo. The son is Imo. So the son will be answering Imo, Imo. Amen. So it was the father's thing that he gave to his son. Praise the Lord. Amen. So they are nothing like Trinity. Hallelujah. They are nothing like Trinity. Ah, you say, hey, the boy say a dove fly in the earth the sun was in the water and the voice come from heaven is that not trinity it is not trinity amen hallelujah praise the lord so we are still talking on the seven spirit so now the question is what is this seven spirit Anybody? Anybody that can try? The seven spirit of God. The seven spirit before his throne. Which spirit is this one? If seven spirit is before his throne, it must be spirit of God now. Or which type of spirit is that? Amen? Seven spirit before his throne. Which spirit is this one? Is this spirit of God or spirit of man? Or is this spirit of 24 elders? Anybody? Hey, give a microphone. Nobody want to help us. This, the seven spirit there is the seven the, the move of God in that age. Praise the Lord. It tried. Come behind for him. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Any other person? It tried. Give the brother. <laughs> Seven class. church messengers. A try. Any other person? Uh -huh. Give the brother. Sir. Those seven spirits are the spirits that represent the seven church ages. Can I have a try? Any sister here? Only one sister have answer. What of this side? Amen. It's in your Bible. Please. Do you have the book of Revelation there? The book of Revelation we are talking about. Where we are reading now, sister? Book of Revelation chapter 1 verse wow. 4. Read it again. Give that sister to read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. We are still dwelling there. Chapter 1 verse 4. It's deep. Oh. We never start. This is the preambles. <laughs> read us, sister. John to the seven churches mm -hmm. which are in Asia. Mm -hmm. Grace be unto you and mm -hmm. peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Uh -huh. So this seven spirit, uh, is this spirit of man or spirit of God? Or whose spirit is this? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister God bless you. Can see now. Now pay attention. Amen. Some of them now give answer. Yes, your answer has a relationship. It has a relationship. Because I think we have taught on it before. We have taught on this seven spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And from the seven spirits, what are these seven spirits? These seven spirits are God's attributes. Amen. They are God's attributes which God used to display his plan through
through the seven church ages. Let it sink. Pay attention because it's deep. It is not in the Bible school. It's not in the seminary. You can't find it there. Amen? They are what? They are God's attribute that God used to manifest his purpose through the seven church ages. Amen? Praise the Lord. Because this seven spirit, hallelujah, somewhere in the Bible, they were seen as what? Seven lamb stand. They were seen as what? Seven lamb stand that are born before his throne. Amen? Again, they were seen as the seven eyes and seven horns on the lamb. Amen? They were seen as what? Seven eyes and seven horns. On where? On the lamb. Praise the Lord. And you know what horn represents in the Bible? What does what horn represent? Power or strength. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, these seven spirits also, they are also the seven church age messengers. They are the seven star in the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? They are the seven trumpet. They are the seven vial. Amen? Any other one there? Praise the Lord. Well, let me pick them up. Amen? They are the seven stars. Amen? At the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are the seven lamb that are burning on the candlesticks. Seven seal at the back side of the seal book that is written at the hand of Almighty. Seven horns and seven eyes. Seven thunders with the mighty angel. Seven trumpets. Amen. And the seven vial. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now if you notice in God's dealing listen in God's dealing with Israel he uses the two olive trees amen the two olive trees or the, or the two weaknesses amen they appear the two weaknesses appear in the book of Genesis chapter 18 when he was going to the house of his friend Abraham, he went there with the two weaknesses. Amen? In the book of Samuel chapter 13, I believe, when Saul was anointed, Samuel asked Saul that as you are going, you are going to meet two men by Rachel Sopoka, going to the mountain to worship. They are going to do, give, you, give you something. They give him wine and bread. Amen. In the book of Zechariah, they appeared at the two olive trees. That is before the God of the whole earth. Amen. Then in the book of Revelation chapter 11, they appear as what? The two weaknesses. Amen. Now, what the two weaknesses or the two olive trees are before God to the Jew. That is what the seven spirits are before God to the Gentile church. Any question? Give a microphone. I hope it's related to what I'm saying. I hope your question is related to what I'm saying, brother. Uh -huh. You don't have to wait for pastor when you want to come and take question and answer. So please, so please listen. Are there major characteristics in these seven church ages? I know how do you? Are there major characteristics in these seven church ages? If Me they are, what are they? 
major characteristics yes in the those seven churches in these seven churches yes in the seven the seven church in the seven church ages praise the lord yeah. we shall get there amen i said for okay for example for example let come let look at our own age because our own age it is us hallelujah amen so you can understand the picture very well now if you because we shall get there as we progress in our study if you go and read the letter that was written to the church in laodicea then amen can we read it can we read the church revelation chapter three from verse 14 now pay attention remember this letter it will be written to a church in the city of laodicea 2000 years ago amen christ and apostle john write this letter send it to the church in laodicea and i said that that letter written 2000 years ago to that church in laodicea it was a representation of the unfolding Laodicean church age. Amen. What you see as characteristic of that church, it was going to be what the Laodicean church age will be like when it manifests. But are you hearing me? Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Uh -huh. So look at Laodicean church age. Pay attention. And then, because we are in the Laodicean church, so you understand better. From verse 14. And unto the angel, that is unto the messenger or that church, perhaps the bishop or the pastor, the overseer, is the messenger to that church. Our pastor here is the messenger of God to this church. That God told me far away when we were at Antonio Bay. And unto the angel or the church of Laodicean, write, these things say the Amen. The faithful and true weakness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I will that thou art cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased in goods and have need of nothing, and knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Amen. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white men, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame or thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eye with eye salve, that thou mayest see, because you are blind. Amen. Now, brother, I hope you are paying attention. This was the characteristic of the church in Laodicea that God write the letter to as at that time but that church was a representation of the present Laodicean church age the spirit God was seen in the city church in the city of Laodicea 2000 years ago was going to be a spirit that will manifest in Laodicean church age in 2014 Do you understand, brother? You see the characteristics now? Amen? If you notice that letter, all the content of that letter is what we are experiencing today in Christian Church of Laodicean Church age. That started in 1906. Amen? Private jet, private jet, you know, millennium, millennium auditorium, universities, post hospital, they had so much money, but without the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's why they are blind. They are blind to spiritual reality and spiritual truth. Amen? God said he was blind. He was naked because he didn't have a wedding garment. He said, you are naked because they were not clouded with their wedding garment. Amen. 
If there's an age that church members are deceived, it is this age we are living in now. This is the age that people, pastors, overseer, GO, are doing their member spiritual 419. It is in this age. Amen. It is in this age. He knows that the people don't have the Holy Ghost. He said they have it. He knows they don't have the Holy Ghost, but he, he assured them they have it. And because the Geo says so, the people believe that they have it. Yet they don't, they don't have it. Because their character, their behavior, their fruit show that they don't have it. Even though you speak in tongue. Speak in tongue and do 419. Speak in tongue and have three or four boyfriends, you alone. Speak in tongue and promise somebody marriage when you don't have money in your pocket. If there was a period that the oil is cast, it is now. It is very, very scarce because there are very, 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 very few sellers of oil. Even if they are selling oil, it is not original. If you put it in your lamp, it will not burn. Amen? They sell a black market oil. If they put it inside the lamp, it will not burn. It will not burn. Amen? The only oil that we burn and produce the spiritual energy that will lead you up from this earth into glory is blue. It will give blue flame. It will give blue flame. And blue is the color of love. Hypertension, diabetes, ulcer, cancer, HIV, AIDS, cough, chest problem is over in the name of Jesus. I declare this water hormonal drug in the name of Jesus. I declare this water the medicine of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you go and buy fake oil, now you love for me to produce and smoke go spoil your kettle and your pot. It won't go any far. Amen. Praise the Lord. You better stay where you are and open your eyes. Amen. Don't stay here because of Prophet Sunday. Or you go because some they are here to take refuge from witches and wizards and wicked uncle. If not, my uncle want to do nonsense, he go go see him. Or professor, they will see him. That's why they are here. But may you go beyond that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, in conclusion, we say. That that special spirit is God's attribute as he revealed them through the seven church ages. Praise the Lord. And we let you understand that what the seven two weaknesses is before God to the Jew is what the seven spirits are before God to the Gentile church. You can pursue that now. Amen. 
So we move forward. Praise the Lord. Verse 5. Go to verse 5. Amen. He said, And from who? From Jesus, who is what? A faithful weakness and the faith begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loveth and worship from our sin in his own blood. Amen. A faithful weakness. Hallelujah. If Jesus is a faithful weakness, it means there were other weaknesses, but they were not faithful. Amen. It's true now. Amen. The Lord declare him what? A faithful weakness. A weakness that is faithful. A weakness that is a weakness indeed. Amen. He go call this one a faithful weakness. He means there are other weaknesses, but they were not faithful. Amen. Now, Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Can we open the Bible to the book of Isaiah chapter 43? We are reading from verse 9. From verse 9. Okay, let's go back to 7 and come down to 9 to 10 and 11. Amen. Faithful weakness. So there were weaknesses that were not faithful. They were either false weaknesses. From verse 7 of Isaiah chapter 43. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nation be gathered together and let, uh, let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show all former things? Let them bring forth their weaknesses that they may justify, that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say, it is true. To the Jew, you are my weaknesses, say the Lord. And my servant, whom I have chosen. That ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God form. Neither shall there be after me. I even I, I am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. I have declared, I have saved, I have shielded when there was no strength God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, pay attention. Because you can drive it home too. The Bible declared the Lord Jesus Christ as a faithful witness. Now, the testimony of God was committed to the Jew. Amen? The commitment of Almighty God was committed to the Jew. They were to bear witness unto God that Jehovah is the only true God in the face of universal idolatry. They are the only nation among all the human family that had that revelation. And God committed to their hand. Amen. 
What made them unfaithful? They had such a testimony. Amen. Having such a testimony, it was not just that they had that knowledge, but this God manifested his goodness in their life to the nation of whole Israel to confirm his faithfulness as the only true God. Are you hearing me? No nation of the world can defeat them in as much as they are in good harmony, in good righteous standing before this God. No nation on earth can stand before Israel. Amen? God will come down and do what? And fight their battle. God will go and warn their enemy keep away from that man. He's my servant. Amen? God turned they were in a desert country. God turned the desert into a forest. God turned a dry land into the fountain of water. To let them know his reality, his goodness, that he is the only true God. God made Abraham and say, there will be no body woman among you. And it was so. No one single person said, don't have child in Israel. It may be delayed, but by and by, you will be born. Except for the, the daughter of Saul. That, that talk nonsense. When David was dancing before God. And God is a personally closed the womb. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, they haven't enjoyed the reality of God. The awesomeness of God. The almightiness of God. The supernatural of God. They have experienced it. They have tested it. They have confessed it. They turn on and worship bar. That what made them unfaithful weakness. Amen? That what made them. And they were to be sons of God. For God stirred them in Egypt and say, Israel is my first son. Amen. Hallelujah. They were unfaithful weakness. They turned to worship idol, set up images in the bush and sacrifice their children to idol. When they already experienced Jehovah as the only true girl, they had seen his authority. He has seen him fight a battle. He has seen him send one angel and confuse the whole army of Syria. The enemy has compared them around. God said, don't worry. In this battle, you will not fire a shot. What I see, what I will do. And it happened the same way. And the same people turn around and begin to worship idol. The work of their own hand. All the things that God said they should not do, they were doing all virtually all of them. Amen. That what made them unfaithful weakness. Listen to me. When Israel rejected Christ and denied him before Pancho Pilate and bring a curse upon them and upon their children, children. Hey. The testimony of God quickly were handed over to the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. The testimony of Almighty God was handed over to you and I today. Amen. Amen. But remember, there is a persecutor. The Jesus Christ, the fourth begotten, our senior brother. A standard bearer of the family of God. God declare him the faithful weakness. What of all of us here? Amen. Can God in this our time, in this our day, even today, today alone, today, 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 can God declare all today that we have been faithful weakness? Amen. Were there anything that we had done to testify to the reality of God? Even the life we live, even our utterances, 
Even our character, even our behavior. Did we do anything today to show they were true weakness or the reality of God? You see? Amen? Yes! If we believe, carry the Bible and do contrary, we are unfaithful and false weaknesses of God. Both the preacher and the hearers of the preacher, we are unfaithful weaknesses of God. Amen? Or he that by the, your lifestyle and by your way of life, you are crucified Christ the second time, you are a faithful weakness. You are unfaithful weakness of the reality of Christ. Hmm. Amen. If the faith begotten is faithful, it is expected that the rest of the brethren shall emulate from their sinner brother and be also faithful as weaknesses. Amen. So it's a serious business. It's, it's a serious business. Not just I believe, brethren, there is a responsibility upon our shoulder to uphold God's testimony in our time. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be a witness to Jesus Christ and living your life like a devil. And come to church and be a Christian and go to the house and be a devil. And come to church and be a holy sister and go to your yard and be on holy sister. That's a false weakness. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It will be, be worse for me to hold microphone here and testify to the reality of God and go back and do contrary. A brother that appeared to us in a is a kinesi. He said, Pastor, position are very, very dangerous. He said, Why? That a pastor is like the chief bridesmaid. That are taking the handkerchief. When the bride is sweat, we will clean them. He sweat, you will wipe him away. He said, You are as you will wipe, you wipe away lies. You will wipe away fornication from her. You will wipe away gossip. You will wipe away emulation. You will wipe away all vices. And when the husband comes, he will carry his wife and took off. And Bryce Smith will go back to where he come from. I said to Fiakwa. Amen. Hallelujah. Think about it. What type of weaknesses are you? A faithful weakness, a true weakness, or unfaithful one. Amen. Israel was unfaithful to God, and that is why He put them away. Hey, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If somebody is unfaithful today, may you not be put away. Amen. When we talk of somebody losing your reward, losing your reward, losing your reward. Today, it matters nothing. Wait until then. When the rule call for the world will be called. And now your brethren are coming to collect their prize. Or your brethren are coming to collect your prize. When your turn comes, they say no. Go to the other side. How will you feel? Amen. In those days, when school was school, that time school was school. In those days of standard, standard, not elementary and primary, it was standard. Amen. When the hour to announce our result come like this, you'll be shivering. That day would they declare you in the notch in the aqua. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. A fearful weakness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord declare him what? A fearful weakness. A standard bearer. May we emulate him from this night in the name of Jesus Christ. May we not just say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Amen. Verse. What verse are we now? Verse 6. Amen. And have made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have been made what? Kings and priests. Hallelujah. Peter said we are royal priesthood. Amen. We are priests now. And that is why today, unlike in the days of God's dealing with Israel, when every man needed to carry his sacrifice and offering to the priest in the temple. Amen? Hallelujah. I want you to understand why he had made all kings and priests. In the days of God dealing with Israel, under the old covenant, every person there, when you want to offer your sacrifice, you must take it to the priest in the temple. There was one tribe of royal priesthood, that is the tribe of Levite. Every other person in Israel, he want to offer anything to God, you must carry it to the priest to offer it to God on your behalf. Amen? But today, amen, every one of us, we can offer our sacrifice unto God. Direct. Amen? That will make you a priest. Amen? Under the new covenant. All of us are priests because we can offer our thanksgiving. We can offer our praises. We can offer whatever sacrifice we want to offer unto God. Because Christ has made us kings and priests. Amen? It was a serious matter. Clap your heart to Jesus. You don't understand. Amen? It was a serious matter. Why did God disqualify Saul? Why? It was because Saul, being a king, intruded into the office of the priesthood and offered sacrifice. God rejected him. Amen? So you can see the benefit of what we have received in Christ. That in Christ today, all of us is down here, we are priests. We can offer our sacrifice unto God direct and nobody will condemn us. Amen. So a king offer sacrifice and God rebuke him. Say you are only a king. You are not a priest. Amen. If, if you are under that period, all of you here, you bring your sacrifice to me. Then I'll carry it to the altar. Amen. Praise the Lord. But because Christ has made the kings and priests, we can offer our sacrifice direct unto God without condemnation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we say thank you Lord Jesus? Yes. God is a wonderful thing. Nobody condemns you. Nobody forbids you. Nobody rebuke you for offering your sacrifice or thanksgiving unto God. Somebody can carry his money and come to the altar here and drop it and thank God. Amen. Under the old covenant, that was the duty of the priest. You want to celebrate your birthday, you bring out your money, without your pure water, and hand it over to the priest. He will bring it here. Amen. Praise the Lord. But Christ Jesus had made us kings and priests. Wonderful. Wonderful. Amen. Let's take one more. Verse 7. He said, Behold, he cometh with a cloud, and every eye shall see him, and they also will pierce him, 
and all the kingdoms of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, in this coming here, Christ is, this is not coming for the bride. Amen. That coming that the whole world will see and wait and cry, it is not the coming for his bride. Amen. Because his coming for his bride will be a secret thing. Amen. It's a secret catching away of the bride. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This coming will be the physical appearance of Christ. When you will be coming to talk about the government of the world. Amen. It will be the fulfillment of the book of Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. A stone that were cut out without hand. That shred out the image on the leg and break them to pieces. Amen. That is all the gentile war power of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Babylonian, Medopatia, Grecian, and the red dragon empire, the Roman empire. Amen. Christ, are they coming? We crush them. Amen. Can we read it a little bit? Praise the Lord. He is coming to make war. He is coming to do what? To make war. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because in this coming, hallelujah, the book of Revelation chapter 19. Chapter 19 from verse 11. Amen. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eye were as a flame of fire, and on his head were what many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a virtue deep in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Amen? Amen? And who is this? Verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Who are these people? Who are they, people? That's right. Amen. The bride haven't spent their seven years up there. After their honeymoon, they are coming down to take over power upon the earth and let the millennium start. And they will rule alongside with Christ. Amen. And the Antichrist and all his army, they were gathered for the battle of Armageddon. To withstand Christ from coming to reign. Amen. It will be a war between supernatural and natural. Amen. It will be a battle between supernatural and natural. Because they will, be, they will see me. They will know that this is not the pastor that they used to know. Amen. They will Carry their bomb action and fight. I'll be looking at him. Amen. Praise the Lord. The man will carry the AK for seven and open fire. I'll be looking at him. What do you think the soldier will do? He will gonna run away. Amen. Hallelujah. They will be fighting their game for people that are wearing the body of angels. Coming to fight the natural. Who can stand? Nobody can stand. Amen. May we be part of it in the name of Jesus Christ. May we not just hear it, but may we be part of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because what we are reading here, brethren, it is real. It is 
real. I was telling them in the east when I had to minister, I say, you've been hearing of Japan, 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 Japan. Have you been there? Amen? The main fact that you have not been there, does it mean that there is no Japan? Does it mean there is no Japan? There is Japan and people are there. Amen? We've been hearing of heaven, 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 it looks like a mirage. Heaven is real. Amen. Hallelujah. That salvation is not just from Jesus, from the from, this one is from the great eternal spirit himself. Amen. The one that was in the beginning, before the beginning began. Hallelujah. That said, Let there be light, and there was light. Hallelujah. And he also had the power one of these days to say, Let there be no more light, and it shall be so also. Amen. Hallelujah. So far, brethren, what do we learn this night? I don't know what to drop behind. The Bible says Christ is a faithful weakness. And he is a faith begotten, even from the dead, even among many brethren. Amen. If he is a faithful weakness, hallelujah, he told the disciples, he said, as the Father has sent me, so also have I sent you. Send you to do what? To be a faithful witness. Amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says, He is the express image of a Father. The brother of His glory. And they have the testimony. Amen? That God, in the book of John chapter 1 verse 18, He said, That God, that no man has seen before, but he's the only begotten son had did what? Had declared him. Amen. The only begotten son had did what? Had declared him. In character, he had declared God. In love, he had declared God. In forgiveness, he had declared God. But even when he was hung on the cross, on that torment, he still said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Ha! Ha! What a forgiveness! After killing him, he is bleeding. He is bleeding in pain and torture. He still say, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Let my enemy fall down and die. Oh, my enemy fall down and die. Oh, my enemy fall down and die. Fall down and die. Forgiveness. Sister, can you forgive? That your best friend that collected that your fiancé from London with dollars and pounds. And the wedding had fixed. And the next you you hear well, that your best friend you Two of you went to visit when he come down from the airport. Is one that you going to marry now? Can you forgive you? She said, "Can you forgive her?" <laughs> it happened. Is that? It hard. Oh. Amen. He put the door through. Now he says it's hard. Oh. The whoop you have been cutting your life from when he was abroad. As he landed, you and your best friend went to visit her in his hotel room. And uh, your wedding had been prepared and fixed. Suddenly the man changed his mind. The next thing we had was that your boyfriend, two of them had gone to their village for introduction. Will you forgive your boyfriend? 
Amen. The only begotten son has declared him. Christianity is not bread and butter. Amen. It's a serious business. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if we are his our brother, the first begotten among many brethren, and today we believe that we are his brethren, we have a lot to learn from the Lord Jesus Christ. If we are actually going to be true children of God, let's bow down our head. We are continuing this Friday in the Lord Tarris. Let's bow down our head and talk to God. Witness, witness, witness. Witness, not weakness, witness. It's witness. Some of my pronouncement is witness. Let's talk to God, brethren. Because, you see, our position is more dangerous. The reason is that to whom much is given, much is expected. That is why our position in the end time message is very, very dangerous. To whom much is given, much is expected. You see? Because we have no excuse. We have no reason not to go in the rapture. We have no reason not to make it at the end. I have no reason to fail. Having known so much of God, like a pastor would say, the revelation of God that you know ought to pattern your life. You ought to create humility, make you fall in love deeply with God and serve Him faithfully, dedicatedly to the end. So let's talk to God. Let's not take it for granted because our position is dangerous. More that be given to us, we are a partaker of God's grace in this age that He has sent the messenger, and we are the people that receive the messenger. When God said in that prophecy in the book of Malachi, He said, I will send you Elijah. I will send you Elijah. That is, all of us in this hall today are that you that God we're talking about. I will send you Elijah. So, all of us in this hall, we are that you that God we're referring to. Talk to God, somebody. You're not taking it for granted. Amen. Don't take it for granted. If you are committed, committed to God, God Himself will be committed to you. If you come to God lousily, God instead will deal with you in a lousy manner. If you are unserious with him, God instead will deal with you in an unserious manner too. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And so our Lord and our Father, we want to thank you, oh God, for the teaching period, O oh Lord. Papa, you have taught us so much tonight to our Father and our God. You say to our virtue, we should add knowledge. Lord, because we are adding knowledge, oh our God, may you add whatever remains there for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let the knowledge we have, oh God, let it not be to our condemnation, but we bring us to justification, Papa, in that day in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, help us, Lord, that what we know now will help us to live a good Christian life and fear God and love Him 
and love the brotherhood and be sober and vigilant on this earth today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I love to carry along with the world, but help us to maintain our pilgrim separation in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, gracious God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Can we break up unto the Lord Jesus Christ? Clap the hands unto the Lord Jesus. My Father and my God, you own my last breath. You have the final say over my life. That's why I must worship you, Papa. I must worship you because before the foundation of the world, you put my name in the book of life. I must worship you for the sacrifice you offered for me, Lord. I worship you.